What's up, guys, and welcome back to a very odds and insy or oddy and indie. We're going to do some detail junk to this uh, 94 Dodge Ram 2500 V10 sitting behind me here. Bunch of little things, bunch of little um, odds and ends things that are just driving me nuts that I want to take care of. It's actually fun stuff for me, too. I love doing the little detail work, making it, you know, closer and closer to perfection. Because, you know, I mean, look at it. Uh, perfection will never achieve. But anyway, let's get started. These reverse lights here, I, I don't even remember when I put these on here, but it's been a long time. They're halogen to begin with, and they're, I think they're just tapped into the reverse lights, which makes me wonder how I had enough fuse up front in order to be able to run, you know, these halogens plus, the, plus those filaments in those. I don't know. Just... Lucky, I guess. Anyway, uh, I stopped by my local tractor supply and they had these things sitting on the shelf and they're like little pod lights with, um, looks like partially fog and partial or partially spot and partially flood. So that should be pretty good for some reverse lights. So uh, I'm just gonna pull these off here and try to mount these as close as I can to this exact same spot. And uh, see if we can get some reverse lights in place because these don't even work at all. Forethought to uh, use bullet style connectors on these. At least I think that was forethought. <laughs> it's just been a mistake. Uh -huh. Let's see what the mounting and installation options are for these. I think really all I need is the actual light itself, maybe, I don't know. And my thought process is to loosen these up and just remount them right where they are and just kind of turn them out a little bit. With that loosened up, I should be able to do what I'm trying to do, which is basically just mount them up like this and keep them tucked up under the bumper as far as I can so as not to interfere with anything. That right there should be, should be pretty good. It doesn't interfere with my chains, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, you know, it came with this really nice big mounting option here, but of course we're gonna use a self-tapper right back in that same hole, because it's just how we roll here. All right, there's the finished product. They're mounted, my reverse lights are on, and as you can clearly see, they're not working. I guess I'm gonna have to lift the truck up and delve under the wiring and see what's going on. I bet it's one of those stupid little scotch lock things that I used and probably shouldn't have used. So, I'll get the truck up and we'll go underneath it and see what's going on. Well, welcome to the underside where we don't have any tag lights, I see. Looks like maybe this and maybe this, but these things here are eaten to pieces, so we're going to fix that while we're under here. But we're concerned right now with reverse lights and why we don't have any down here. Let's see if we can get this thing where we can actually see it. Pretty close. I am tapped into this one. I wonder if this is... 
the one for reverse or not. I guess what I can do is just unplug the stupid thing. Uh, one of these days I'm going to invent a hook for these damn things so they stay where you put them. Somebody should have already done that a long time ago. Uh, there we go. Perfect. There. Now. I am tapped into the purple one, it looks like. Purple one. I got voltage there. Which means I should have voltage here, wrapped around here, over to here, wrapped around here, over to there, and then one side of this, possibly. If I, there's a fuse holder here. I'm just curious if I'm getting power into and out of the fuse holder. It does not appear that I am. Not that side. Not that side, which means my these dumb little scotch slot connectors. That's what's going on here, probably. Years and years of dirt and dust and debris in here. ends up making them a terrible connection. Yeah, I'm sure that's what that is. Oh look, <laughs> suddenly they're working if I just twist that connector. So that's the problem. All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna cut all this chunk here and see if we can maybe make this a little neater when we put it back together here. Actually I don't guess it was I guess it was actually neat enough. It was just in a big wad. Split wings back. And I think as far as this stuff here goes, I think I'm just gonna get a large zip tie and just zip tie it around the back of this. And for this, we'll have to figure out some way of putting that on there so that it doesn't fall off. I'm sure somebody's going to disagree with the way I'm about to do this. And I'm about to do this this way anyhow. I want to take one of these, put on this side. Crimper it. Then I'm going to take this one and I'm actually going to um, cut it back a little bit or a lot bit. I don't want to um, actually cut this wire. I know what I'm doing is just about as bad, but I don't want to cut it because it's too hard to get um, it's too hard to get it. Um, taped back up in a way that'll you know work I mean obviously shrink wrap would be the way to do it but you can't shrink wrap, wrap a wire unless you cut it completely so so what I'm doing is this old trick my grandma taught me and basically you just pinch it up if you can see what I'm doing here you pinch it up like that put your connector on it and crimper it down. And I missed on account of I'm not very good at this. There. Let's try this one. Crimp that one. Then we can plug them together and of course we're going to have lights immediately at that point. There. Now we can plug these back in for the trailer lights. And that's what we're left with. And we can see that the lights are indeed working. I see spots. That's what we ended up with. This is all the wires for the reverse deal. And I was actually going to replace 
um, replace these backup light holders. But evidently there's an entire housing of some sort here that's broke off because the new housings that I have, you know, the ball pits before it even goes in. So I think I'm actually missing something um, on this. I wonder if there wasn't more here and it's just broken off or what. I don't know. I'm going to investigate that a little bit more. But for now, for now we have backup lights and lots of them. Here's one of the other things that um, I decided to buy for the truck. Uh, this thing is on Amazon. I want to say it's about 60 bucks, something like that. Um, it's a cup holder and other junk holder, whatever you want to put in there, I guess. I, I like to set my cell phone in there uh, for these second gen uh, center consoles. I have one of these for my uh, my 2000 F3, uh, F250 and it's, you know, it's, it's, I think mine's made by Autometer, but it's exactly the same thing. And it was a game changer. I had forgotten how junky those cup holders really were. I mean, today's cups, you know, those big gigantic Yeti thermoses and whatever. Yeah, those don't sit up there at all. Plus those, uh, those cup holders are just super brittle these days. So I opted for this. I'm gonna leave an Amazon link um, down there in the description where you can pick one of these up. Like I said, I think they're about 60 bucks, at least at the time I'm recording this, which is, what is this? This is April of 23. Um, so anyway, it's, it's very simple. It literally just lift the lid and sit the thing in. It doesn't even mount. It just sits there. No holes to drill. Installs in about 3.22 seconds. Uh, but I, had, I did have to make a little latch modification. Let me, let me kind of show you what I had to do there. One thing you'll run into when you try to put this thing in here, it just sits in like that. There's nothing special holding it except the lid itself. One thing you're gonna run into though is, or at least one of the things I ran into, was this post here that actually catches the uh, the lid, or latches the lid. It's, it's a little bit too low where it was in my case. So when I went to close the console, I had a gap on the side like that, and it, you know, it would just pop open, you, it wouldn't latch deal was this um this stuff here was just taking up just enough room so that it wouldn't work and here's what i found this whole surround here uh actually pulls off of this um uh, off of this thing and the way you do it is just a plastic pry tool and what i did was i just got under one of the edges of it and just started working my way back very slowly i mean you've got to really be careful this thing is this thing is seriously in there. You don't want to break it. So once you get that thing popped out, there is a nut right there. And you can just loosen that nut a little bit and you can actually rotate this thing and it'll raise it up. I rotated it, I don't know, let's call it three turns, something like that, two, three turns. And that seems to be better. At this point, it should clip back down into its little home yep there it goes okay awesome and then then this thing sits here just like this and hopefully yeah look at that so I still gotta slam it a little bit but Actually, no, I guess I don't have to slam it that much. It doesn't latch what I would call easily, but it latches pretty well. And that's the only thing that retains this cup holder and keeps it in place. Otherwise, it just sits there. But either way, that right there really makes the truck as far as being able to carry stuff. I mean, that's a pretty large insulated cup there. And it fits it. No problemo. So... <sighs> If you got a second gen Dodge, go get you one of them. I want your guys' opinion on something. I've got a bunch of little projects that I have uh, planned for this truck, like small stuff, interesting stuff, fun stuff, not, you know, wrenching and working, but more, you know, fun and customizing type things. Um, one of the projects that I'm considering doing is returning the factory sound system to stock. This thing came with the Infinity. Uh, amplified system from the factory and that was a I think that was a pretty expensive option you know for the time 
So I've kind of, I've kind of already started down the road of doing this. I found a few radios. Uh, all of them have problems. I found several speakers. If you're not familiar with the Infinity speakers, uh, in, in this year range, the speaker actually had an amplifier fitted to the back of the actual uh, speaker housing itself. It was uh, kind of a crescent shaped, I, I'll stick a picture up here if I can find one, uh, kind of a crescent shaped amplifier. And uh, it kind of went around the magnet and it used the excursion of the, uh, the woofer to, to kind of cool it. It's a really neat thing. Um, it Basically, each one of the speaker connections in the truck has four terminals. Uh, there's a power and a ground to power the amplifier. And then there are, you know, the speaker uh, positive and negative inputs. So uh, evidently those, those things accept at high level input just from a radio. So anyway, uh, if you guys are interested in seeing me return this thing to stock and doing a video on it, um, let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd watch. You know, who knows, may happen. So anyway, back to the show. Another little finishing touch I want to add to this. Many, many moons ago, um, I had these knobs kind of start breaking on me. So I went and bought a replacement set of them. But if you'll look, they have this weird profile to them. They have this lip that sticks up. And while they, I guess they fit okay, they just look kind of strange. Not that knob. That knob looks fine. Luckily, Dorman makes what appears to be the proper the proper set of them. Um, in fact, these may have been dormant, I don't know. But like I said, they were bought late 90s somewhere. Plus, they have a uh, they have an orange glow, and I don't recall the original ones having an orange glow. I want to say they were green. I don't know. We're gonna find out. But anyway, those install easy. Pull, pull, discard, discard, and Well, I'm not going to say they're a be Oh, yeah, they fit great. Yeah, that's nice. How about they have no color at all to them? Excellent. No diffusers back there at all. That's okay. Right, that's the wrong one. Yeah, that looks actually a whole lot better. It sucks they don't have uh, light diffusers in them, but you know, at least they at least they look right. And it came with a fan knob, but eh, this was probably a better quality fan knob. Actually, I think this may have been the original the original knob to the truck. I really just can't remember. I think it was this one that broke the one for the um, for the, uh, the temperature control. But so that's taken care of, and that looks a little bit better. Also, while I was at it, I went ahead and installed the toolbox back on here. This was the toolbox that was supposed to be on the truck originally. Of course, that gets us locked, but uh, yeah, that's in there, and that's that's decent. Look, remnants of old exhaust and oil on these uh, on these bed caps here. I'm I'm torn on these things. I kind of played around with them for about two seconds and I think they'll shine up once I get some of this stuff maybe scraped off of them. But they have fit terribly since day one. They're just, you see how far out they are there. And of course these are bent all the way down the side. You can see how it bows. They're not in that great of shape. Tailgate protector, eh, it's better, but it's not good either. Again, you can see here how this thing sits. It's just terrible. If you push it all the way down, then it's it's way too far out and all that. But I don't know. I may get the buffing wheel out and give those a quick polish and just make them look a little bit better. And I found my original Ram um, receiver hitch cover. It was behind the seat of the truck. No telling how long that sucker's been sitting there. That overhead uh, compass and console thing, it's... You can see it's got a, um, a little gap up there at the top and that's where it's not fitting very tight because I only had one of those little magical clips that clips it together. Also, the actual compass itself isn't working so I need to spend some time and see if we can get that going. I got one from a junkyard. So I guess the next part of the video will be trying to get the compass working and getting that thing up overhead once and for all so I never have to pull it back down again, hopefully. Getting these things apart, 
um, I think, but from the factory, I think it's a deal where you pull these two Phillips head screws out. And then I think you slide the whole apparatus backward to unlatch it. I think that's what they want you to do. Yeah, there you go. So you can probably see that hole up there, how it's wide at the back side and narrow at the front. When you go to put the thing back up, you just snap it back into place. It'll snap into those little holes, but it won't unsnap. Um, if you pull it, you'll break it. So you slide it back and these little things drop off. Let me show you what kind of madness I did <laughs> to make uh, to make this work. It's uh, I'm pretty proud of my fabrication skills. I'll just go ahead and tell you. There you go. One plug to rule them all. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to keep this piece here. I have, a, like I said, another one of these from a junkyard, but all of the screw bosses are broke off on the inside. These things are broken off of it. This one has all these switches in the front of it that I had for uh, the front one was my fog lights, the back one were, were backup lights, and the, the uh, three center ones were a roll bar. I had a, a like a big old roll bar on this thing with like 5KC daylighters on it. Give me a break. It was the late 90s. That was cool back then. Anyway, let me, uh, let me get you over to the table and show you how I have repaired this thing. Well, so this is the problem with them. These are the ears that go up at the at the uh, rear of the unit and actually clip in. So there's supposed to be a metal clip there. You see, there's a metal clip on this one, but it's I've had to do a repair. Um, basically, I just took a piece of plastic and stuck it in there, ran a couple of screws in it, and put my uh, put my clip back on it, and that worked out extremely well. So that's. Uh, the only reason I didn't do this side is because I didn't have another one of those clips at that point and I just wanted to stop until I was able to get to a junkyard and find one and I have so when we go to put this back up here hopefully it'll be the final time we put it back up here and I'll fix this put a clip on it hopefully have a compass module working and we can never pull this back down again unless we have you know one that's more pristine to put back in its place so here's the um Here's the, the compass module that I got from a junkyard. And um, I already know it's gonna have button issues. The, uh, and I'll probably end up showing you this here in a minute. The, the little push buttons that are mounted to the circuit board under here, they kind of start to melt and get like bubble gum. And since they're plastic housings, there's no pulling them apart and fixing them like I normally would. Like a metal button, I could pull it apart, fix it, respring it and all that stuff. But these are just, almost manufactured e-waste uh, also this one has some of the ears on it but it's a trade-off because the button is mar is marred here it's missing part of it and mine is not so what we're going to do is we're going to jump up in the truck and we'll stick this thing in there and make sure that it actually does light up and if it does um, we'll go ahead and we'll swap it over into this housing and maybe this shell i don't know um i did put this thing on the test bench and power it up and the uh the display does have the grid lines uh lit up on it um the vfd does have the grids lit up on it so um, i think that it's looking for information to be put into it here in order you know to actually display stuff so hopefully when i plug it in it'll work we'll find out so that's plugged in, and do we have keys? Yes, we have keys. Right, what we got here? Hey, look at that! Nothing. <laughs> Almost all of these things just suck. Well, there it is, back up there. I wish I had the footage of showing you you know me putting it back up there and, and all that but unfortunately I use GoPro cameras and GoPro cameras lose more footage for me I have three GoPro cameras and all of them act stupid uh, don't understand it you, you push the record button it flashes you start recording then it goes beep 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 and it's done 
Well, I couldn't, um, I just couldn't leave that center console like that. I had to do something else about it. So, went to my local junkyard again and did some more scouring around and found that one. This one is actually clean on the bottom. It doesn't have all those, um, all those switches and everything. And look at this. Turn the key on and wait for it. It actually works. Good. I feel so much better. I figured, eh, you know, it's been a few days since I filmed the last thing, but figured I'd go ahead and throw that in there just to show you guys that, eh, I did get it taken care of at least. So uh, that's one more thing off my list. Well, I went to my favorite little salvage yard uh, that's local to me. They got a few of these trucks in there and a couple of these trucks that they have in there are pretty nice. Um, well, they're wrecked, but they're low miles, nice trucks. Anyway, um, this is from a 1999 Ram uh, 1500. And it doesn't look exactly the same as those. Imagine that Dodge changed something. I think they changed something like every third truck or something. It's amazing they stayed in business. That's what the the uh, the factory one looks like on this truck, and this is what it looked like on the Ram truck or on the uh, the, the the newer truck. So here's what I'm thinking. I pulled that line apart, and basically I just it's just the you know the back of it, the rubber part, and it's still nice and flexible though I wouldn't push my luck with it. So I wonder if I can just pull this light out and maybe trim this thing to fit uh, and, you know, just get it worked out that way. You know, rig it up, make it work. Because of all the trucks that he has in that junkyard that are this year model, every one of them has the exact same problem. The back of the lights are just gone. They're deteriorated. So let's pull these off and see what we... What we have. I'm like that Dyson dude. I just believe things should work properly. People probably wouldn't fuss so much over tail lights. All right, so that's what's on the back of this one. What's left on the back of this one. It's just powdered and gone. But hopefully, hopefully it's the same it is the same. Look at that. So I can retain my stock front or uh, my, my stock lenses and use these. New, oh, you know what? I wonder if I can do that or not. I wonder if that bulb is going to stick out too far. Let me grab a bulb. Yeah, what I'm worried about here is when I take this housing and pop a bulb in there. That looks pretty good, actually. Is it going to stick out too far to get this back on there? And the answer to that is no, it's going to be fine. It actually is going to fit pretty well. These bolt holes or the screw holes don't exactly line up, but it's rubbery. We can make it fit. That's exactly what I intend to do. Um, this thing has a plug on the end of it that I <laughs> bet you $47.18 isn't the right one for this truck because i'm sure they changed that too because they changed everything year to year you know what we probably should do we probably should uh get this thing attached and get it wired up and turn the parking lights on and make sure that we don't have that bulb in there out of phase because it's an led and it only works positive to positive unlike an incandescent bulb all right, let's see what the hookup looks like. This is the, what's left of the original bulb socket. You can see how it's just eaten to pieces there and it flakes off in your fingers. But anyway, there's a plug right up here. That looks suspiciously like the other one, the new one, doesn't it? Okay, well, let's plug it in. Perfect. All right. Now, on that hole, pop that thing back in there. Sure, can't see it though. There we go. Cool. All right. 
and actually right here is ooh, the plug for the other one it's not pretty though it's okay I'll work it out Let's see if we can get that worked it's plugged up I'll turn the parking lights on you guys tell me if it comes on or not did it come on it didn't okay Let's turn this around then. Ooh, ooh, it's dirty. Socket's dirty. <laughs> Look, tag light. <laughs> that works. Well, I guess I need to clean out and re squish these connectors. To do that, I'm just going to take a pick, stick in there, careful not to short them out. And just basically re-squeeze them back together. The way to clean these things up, or the best way that I've found to clean these things up, is with a tiny piece of sandpaper. And you basically you shove it down in there, kind of like the bulb. And you can grab a pair of pliers and put some tension on it and pull it out. It takes forever. To get it clean but it does work pretty well all right will this go back together and work is the real question now to do the other one so for any of you guys with second gens, early second gens, um, you can use the rear part of the tag housing or tag lamp housing from the newer trucks, late second gen. Who knew? So that wraps up that little project. Well, this is the next thing that's driving me nuts. You see how the, uh, the engine harness or the ECU harness there is just kind of laying there and all of the tabs are broken and the um, the split loom is all crunchy and you know destroyed you'll see right there I have a zip tie stuck in the factory hole there a new zip tie jumped out on Amazon bought a pack of these uh, these zip ties that have the Christmas tree fasteners on them uh, I'll leave a link below in the description for that if you guys are needing that and I also went ahead and got some uh, some of this kind of split loom, this kind of uh, nylon-y, clothy stuff. So the idea here is going to be I'm going to strip all of that old split loom off of this. And I'm going to replace it. I'm going to put brand new um, little Christmas tree thingies on there and get that all put back up along there. Should be fun. Should be just as simple as cutting all the old zip ties, which are brittle anyway, and just breaking all this old split loom off here. I'm just going to let it fall on the floor, I guess.
How much cleaner is that? I'm gonna say about eight. Um, okay, here's another another little thing that's driving me bonkers about the truck. This is a rubber, I guess, uh, maybe a rain shield or rain um, weather strip, something like that. It goes up there at the pinch weld, right above that um, that harness I just got done fixing up. I think it just sticks in place because you can see that it's, you know, just basically an interference fit it looks like. Let's see if it goes up there and works. I think it goes up here something like this maybe. Yeah, probably something like that. I don't know how far over it goes though is the real question I have. Does it go all the way to the end? It looks like about that. Good interference fit, as a matter of fact. Got to hide some of that wiring, too. That's pretty good. It totally hides all that work we just got finished doing. But that's okay. Because we know what's back there. Well, we're inching ever closer to perfection in the form of a Dodge Ram 2500. If it can be perfection, it can't. Guys, I appreciate you watching the video. Just thought I might take you along as I, you know, went through a little punch list of outstanding issues on the truck. Thought it might make a fun video. Um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends about us. I'll see you next time.